What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and MM2K Gaming back again with another NRO Daily. And in this video, I want to talk about my best advice for Xbox after CMA blocked the APK deal. This is my rant <laughs> on that subject, all right? Um, so as I talk about this and I go into this, I, I did kind of organize my thoughts a little bit. Uh, I'm going to break this up into four sections. Uh, the first section being what happened and why. The second section being the chance of the reversal of what happened, which was CMA blocking this deal. Um, I want to talk about the next steps if this deal ultimately fails, because I mean, it's not done yet a hundred percent if you want to be technical it's not completely over but you know we'll, we'll get into that and lastly i want to wrap this up in a nice little bow and give my conclusion and reiterate some of the more poignant points okay but first and foremost let's talk about what happened and why okay so for those of you that have been under a rock have not been paying attention to this and just getting caught up let, let's just do a quick recap um the recent news about the failed acquisition of Activision Blizzard King, also known as APK, by Microsoft has caused quite a stir in the gaming community. In this video, we're going to explore why the UK Competition and Markets Authority, CMA, blocked the deal and why it's highly unlikely that the decision will be reversed. We'll also take a look at how Microsoft messed up in trying to get the deal passed and what the company should do moving forward, particularly if this deal is axed. Okay, so let's start with why the CMA blocked the APK deal. Um, now, as a reminder, the APK deal was a proposal from Microsoft, which was agreed to by Activision Blizzard, for Activision Blizzard to be purchased for $70 billion. If passed, this would have been the largest acquisition in gaming history, dollar-wise. Now, the deal needs to get approval from three major regulatory bodies in order to be finalized. Those three bodies are the USFTC, the EU and the UK CMA, the focal point of this uh, video today. Unfortunately for Xbox, Activision Blizzard and proponents of this deal, on Wednesday, April 26th, the UK CMA voted to block the deal, um, citing big concerns and issues with how this deal would have effects on the growing cloud gaming market, okay? Um, and in doing so, in blocking this deal, this creates a very difficult hurdle for the deal to be approved, okay? Um, with that being said, the UK CMA did provide several key reasons for its decisions, and some of those reasons include um, their unease with Xbox's uh, remedy attempts. Now, what happened was CMA, before they made their final decision April 26th, they said, look, Xbox, we got some concerns here that would have been raised. There were concerns about console, but those were no longer a concern after Xbox did some, some things there. Um, but they still had concerns on the cloud. They said, okay, now we're going to evaluate the cloud market. So these are the things that we would like you to do in regards to, to ease our concerns over the cloud. And Xbox's response to saying, hey, look, because um, they have the opportunity to do this. They can do, they can at liberty try to tiptoe around certain things and do certain things differently from what was uh, transcribed to them from the CMA. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't work. This time it didn't work. <laughs> so in looking at what Xbox decided to do based upon the remedies that CMA forwarded to them, this is CMA's response. They think that Xbox's remedy attempts were having too narrow of a focus on potential cloud uh, competitors. Um, and this is just me summarizing it. This isn't word for word. Um, the next thing was they, they feel like that, the, that Xbox was too focused on remedies to competitors via a la carte purchases, meaning, look, you're going to be offering these games if you buy Activision Blizzard via Game Pass, which is a game subscription model. Why don't you propose some deals for somebody else on the cloud to do that. For instance, one big thing that isn't being talked about, and I want to get into it, in, into it too much here because I've already talked about it at, um, at length in other videos, check them out on this channel. But one of the things that Xbox never said, even in its um, 10 year deals with PlayStation, is they never said, we're gonna give you a deal for you to put 
this in your subscription model that is on the cloud. You got to remember that PlayStation um, merged this PlayStation Now and its PlayStation Plus services. And there's a tier where it emulates Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate, where um, you not only get access to the subscription service for um, a native play, but for play on the cloud. They never served any remedies for access of Call of Duty on the cloud for PlayStation. So that was one of the things that the CMA said, ah, no, nah, we, we, we don't like your remedies that you are um, providing here based upon what we would have liked for you to do. Also, uh, they feel like that... Um, the remedies that Xbox provided were only beneficial to competition who have PC infrastructure baked into their cloud services. So think, um, even though they're debunked now, think Google Stadia. Google Stadia was totally a Linux-based service, and they said because of it being Linux-based that that's why that technology was so great and so fantastic um, from the onset as far as its cloud competitors or its cloud peers um, because they use like their own proprietary version of Linux. So the CMA is saying if somebody else decides to do the same thing, they're going to be at a loss here because all these deals are structured to solely uh, be dependent upon the PC versions or the x86 architecture. If I got that right, my tech heads listening to this will let me know if I don't. The x86 architecture version of these games. Um, if your cloud service is based off of that, you'll benefit. If not, you won't. So that's a problem to CMA. And lastly, one of the um, the main stickler points um, is the remedy period offered is too brief. Like the 10 year deals, CMA said, nah, bucko, I, I, that's not going to fly. And, and think about it this way. OK, so everybody, I think, is in agreement that cloud gaming isn't going to boom overnight. It's got to go through a maturation period. That's why. Um, cloud gaming is being idolized now not because of its potential immediately but its potential maybe seven to ten years from now that's why they're rating it based off of something called compound annual growth rate c-a-g-r look it up that's something that you measure if something is creating revenue and growing rapidly year to year the revenue that is generating is rapidly growing year to year based upon you taking said revenue each year and just reinvesting it when you do that that's like a long term like more like a bearish type of market investment but the market looks at those type of investments as signs of something that's about to boom over um, X amount of time, usually, again, seven to 10 years. So they're looking at the CAGR of cloud gaming. They're like, look, if you keep taking that compound revenue, just compounding it in again and again and investing it in cloud gaming right over seven to 10 years, you could have something that's built up so strong that it's going to become a serious competitor in the market. Um, and looking at that, they're saying, look, it's going to take 10 years to get there. So while it's in the pre-maturation phase, you're going to give these cloud gaming platforms these deals. These cloud gamers are going to get used to it. And then right when it, hit, it hits its maturation phase, you're going to yank it and say, OK, if you want to continue to play this in the cloud, you got to come to us. That's not fair competitively as far as the CMA is concerned. So that's like the kind of round out where they're coming from, from all four pillars. That's the best way I, I can phrase it. Now, in addition to those pillar concerns, um, and, and that was their rebut to the remedies that Xbox proposed and why they didn't approve of them. Um, we've been following the breadcrumbs here. And with each one that we've been following and picking up <laughs> and putting our little bird sack. It appears that Xbox is not so secret desired outcome of these acquisitions is what made the cloud gaming portion such a major focal point. That desired outcome was Xbox's hope that they could squeeze out competition and specific competition in the cloud gaming market. Now, cloud gaming becoming CMA Sutton main focal point is testament to that outcome being realized. And it was realized rightfully so. What am I talking about? Well, Xbox had been vocally, had been vocal publicly rather, that they were quote unquote afraid 
of Google and Amazon entering the AAA gaming market. You remember that? If you don't, go go look it up. Phil Spencer was the main mouthpiece and who's out there. I fear Amazon and Google getting into the gaming, AAA gaming market. I don't trust them. He was saying these things quite adamantly and they were strange and never been heard before. And he was trying to like send out these dog whistles to gamers that, you know, we need to fight them at, at all costs so they don't compete. But the way he was phrasing it, it was like, I'm not trying to stop them from competing. I'm trying to stop them from doing harm. That was the dog whistle, right? Now, there are also some not so public accounts that I can attest to, right? Because I know a lot of people have held various conversations with people close to Xbox. And one of my favorite platforms, which is now gone, um, in the cloud was Stadia. So I would go back and forth with different people in, in their opposition to Stadia because they were supporting Xbox and vice versa. And one of the things that was constantly dangled in front of me is, aha, Xbox bought, active, um, bought Bethesda, Stadia closed down its internal studios, and they did exactly what Xbox wanted them to do. They wanted them to look at this and say, why bother, okay? That has an anti-competitive stench all over it, as the CMA is pointing out. And here's the thing about that. Again, I can attest to not so public accounts of those practices, as well as public innuendo that Xbox wanted to buy up major third party games. This was so Google, Stadia and Amazon Luna specifically wouldn't have any desirable games to put on their upcoming platforms because of these public statements and actions that followed that were communicated by mainly by the head of windows gaming phil spencer their market unfriendly attempt was heavily scrutinized in regards to cloud gaming as a result this led to the remedies established that were not met sufficiently therefore the cma concluded that the deal would reduce competition and innovation in the gaming market, okay? So hopefully we got that squared away. All right, let's talk about this chance of reversal because I'm hearing this a lot. Oh no, they're, they're gonna flip it over. This person and that person and this legal hack is saying and that's gonna get reversed. Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's talk about these chances of the decision being reversed. Look, frankly put, and this is coming from top tier financial investigative services like UBS. These UBS is the company that big market companies hire to investigate the market and see if something is plausible. UBS is saying things like the deal is likely dead. Uh, uh, a, a, an appeal is too unlikely to be successful for Xbox and Microsoft in this case. They are saying things like that, okay? All right, so it's highly unlikely that the deal will go through. The CMA has already conducted a thorough investigation and concluded that the deal will reduce competition and innovation. Microsoft does have the option to appeal the decision, so it's not over yet, right? But it's unlikely that the appeal will be successful. Gamers, because of that, look guys and gals, we should expect that this deal is not gonna go through. That's that's our best bet, okay? We need to stay in our lane as gamers and act as gamers slash consumers. And if you by chance were hoping that Xbox would obtain uh, ABK to bolster its first party lineup, uh, you know, at this point, you're better served vocalizing to Xbox that they just simply need to do better managing the output from studios they already own, okay? And from the looks of it, they already own more than PlayStation. PlayStation is just whooping everybody's rear with four studios. Get your best talent together, manage them properly, get to work ASAP, okay? All right, so that's in, in regards to the chance of reversal. I felt it was important for me to address that. Next, this is the big kitten caboodle here. What next if the deal fails? Okay, this is where we gotta have our or coming to the Messiah moment, all right? Moving on to the root cause analysis of Microsoft's failure to get this deal passed is, is, is focal when we talk about what's next, particularly if this deal fails. If Microsoft execs 
want to do a thorough root cause analysis if this deal fails, there are several steps they will want to take. Now, before I get into these steps, let me let me preface this with this. I'm not some gaming hack that sits on my grandma's plaid couch picking my navel with the jar of Vaseline, open jar of Vaseline sitting here playing games and ain't got no experience about what I'm talking about here. I have 25 plus years in Fortune 500 business. I've managed managers, gave depositions and, and, and testimony in multi-million dollar cases, have worked with regulators. I cringe when they call because they never, they ain't calling for anything good. So I have a decent amount of experience in this field. And whenever we run into something with the potential catastrophic nature as this deal failing, whenever we run into something like this in my company, we always are looking at root cause analysis. The managers are getting together with the senior management team and, 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 and their bosses, and if, if necessary, to figure out what happened and why and what can we do to probably reverse this, this, this ill-received outcome and to ensure that it never happens again. Root cause analysis, okay? All right, so now that I've done that, told you to make sure that you guys realize I'm not selling Bazooka Joe comics for a living, okay? I have experience in this. Let's talk about what they need to do for root cause analysis purposes. First, these execs, they need to determine if Phil Spencer, who again, as I stated earlier, and has been shown by the evidence that's out there on the internet, when he was sitting there saying, I, I can't sleep at night. These are literally, no, these are literally his words. I can't sleep at night. I don't trust Google and Amazon getting into the AAA gaming market, okay? When he was saying this stuff, knowing the acquisitions and the size of the acquisitions that Xbox was going to make or willing to make, the first thing I would want to know as an exec is, was Phil Spencer authorized by our legal or public re relations PR departments to publicly say that Xbox feared or didn't trust Amazon or Google getting into the triple A uh, gaming market? Why is that important? Because if anyone from legal or PR did authorize Phil to say that, they, along with Phil, need to be listed in that root cause analysis as direct causes that need that needed that caused the need for remedies to even be associated to the cloud gaming sector right because when phil was speaking about this amazon and google are getting in we're entering the triple a gaming market via what cloud gaming hmm right and as I told you before, I was told directly by people close to Microsoft that the purpose, <laughs> particularly of the Bethesda purchase, was to send a signal to um, Amazon and Google, we're, we could potentially gobble, gobble up any of your partners that you would see would benefit your platforms or that you're even working with now. Google was working with Bethesda on something called Project Orion, which was going to elevate, seriously elevate their cloud gaming platform, which was already revered, but it was going to elevate it even more, allowing faster frames and smoother gameplay with this technology that they were using. Once Microsoft bought them up, that was the end of that. What ended up happening? NVIDIA GeForce now end up leapfrogging them in performance. And you got to surmise that that was damaging to their business, along with no longer having Bethesda as a partner as Bethesda had dropped multiple games at launch on the platform or with at least within the first year. OK, so that was a problem. Um, so, again, we're looking to see if the PR departments or the legal department authorize Phil Spencer to say this. Because here's the problem. They need to be listed along with Phil Spencer as the root cause of these remedies even being thrown into the picture. Why? Because any legal or PR representative that approved Phil Spencer making such comments should immediately be terminated if possible or speed tracked to final written or final warning corrective action. Why? Because look, here's the thing, y'all. 
particularly from pre PR or legal approval of such ridiculous comments that would only defeat the purpose that you need served if used in evidence that, that should have been foreseen approval of such is extremely extremely bonehead <laughs> there's no other way to put it as it relates to trying to stay from or straying from exhibiting anti-competitive tendencies or something that could come back to bite you you always got you 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 hope for the best but you prepare for the worst if you're going to engage in these multi-billion dollar deals you got to expect scrutiny and you got to keep everything tight as a button okay individuals in those roles who do not know that allowing comments or comments like that being said would have said effect allowing them to stay on 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 um, crucial parts of the staff will only cause further extreme harm down the road again if they remain or if the behavior is not remedied asap i i would just say, look you don't belong in legal or pr if you approve that you just need to go but if because of rules and regulations of the state due to employment rules and regulations if i can't just straight out terminate you then you're going on immediate final corrective action measures okay now if you think that's extreme <laughs> we're going further phil spencer look here, here's the fact of the matter, y'all. Yes, I'm going there. As an industry veteran and being familiar with anti-competitive risks, he should definitely know better as well. Maybe not as much as them. So I'm not I'm not going to immediately say that it's a must for him, but it should be on the table. At the very at the very least, his, his role needs to be evaluated, possibly for immediate replacement. But if the board doesn't deem that's, I don't, I don't think immediate replacement is an is a necessity, is an is an exact necessity. It's a possibility, and and you you can, you know they they can they can rule on that and figure that out based upon other evidence and, and performance things. Um, but if deemed not necessary, at the very least, Phil Spencer should be monitored by the board under an eighteen month somewhat of a probationary period right um or the end date would be by the end of fourth the, the calendar fourth quarter of 2024 not the fiscal right so and these are the things that they need to be measuring fill for that like these are the things that he has to accomplish um by the end of quarter four 2024 they need to see if phil under his leadership has helped spur uh, a 3% improvement year over year, not quarter to quarter, but year over year in game subscription services. Okay. And software revenue, the, com the combination of both game subscription services and software revenue. They, there has to be a 3% improvement across the board along with not just and or along with a 20% increase year over year, not quarter to quarter, year over year in hardware sales. And along with, all right, an average 85 Metacritic rating between 2023, all the AAAs that released in 2023 by the fourth quarter of 2024, there needs to be an average 85 Metacritic rating rating in the all the first party triple a's released and at least an 80 metacritic rating in second party games released if phil can't meet those metrics then he should be relieved this, of his duties you, you you evaluate this by first quarter of 2025 and if he can't if he ain't met those metrics then it's time it's time for him to move on that's not asking a lot We've been kicking this can down the road by so many years. So many things have been offered by Phil Spencer, and he has fallen short on all of those things as far as reaching the expectations that were held. And I get it. There's a bunch of, I hate to call them zealots, but there's there's nothing else to call them. There's a bunch of zealots and, and diehard brand loyalists that 
this is more like a country club to them. They're, they don't even pursue this as consumers. The end, the, the, the end of the game for them was just simply buying an Xbox product. Now I'm in the club. Woo-hoo! So Xbox can't do any wrong. I'm not talking to, to them. They, they, they're, they're more than welcome to listen to this. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to those that look at everything feasibly from a consumer standpoint. There has to be some accountability somewhere. And if Phil doesn't start making good on the promise of, hey, you know, we're, we're turning the corner and all that other stuff. If he makes if he makes good on his promises, finally, then three percent increase year over year in subscription service and software revenue shouldn't be a problem. A 20 percent increase in hardware sales shouldn't be a problem. And particularly 85 Metacritic. I mean, really, you need like a 90 plus Metacritic average for your your first party AAA games. But I'm, I'm cutting you some slack because, we, you know, now we're going to go with 85. We're going to see how things go. And if that's not good enough, we're going to go to 90. But at least you can give yourself a lifeline by me- meeting these meager uh, litmuses. OK, three percent again, year over year subscription and software revenue um, increase by quarter four, 2020. Uh, for shouldn't be a problem. 20% increase in hardware sales by fourth quarter 2024 shouldn't be a problem. Average 85 Metacritic starting from gauging from 2023 to the end of 2024 shouldn't be a problem. Why? In particular, because we're ending these metrics at the end of 2024. That is the holiday season. If you do have a plan, an effective plan to turn things around, if you ain't done it by the end of uh, quarter four 2024, you ain't never going to do it. It's time, it's time to stop playing the perpetual state of weight game. All right. So in conclusion, all right, accountability is key. Microsoft has to hold its gaming division more accountable from the top if they plan to reverse the extremely negative effects from the APK deal failing. Again, these are all remedies and stuff that we're talking about if this deal fails. And I still think I'm being easy on him, you know, at second glance of it. But I think it's fathomable because when you try to let people go, you got to give them reasonable and obtainable goals when you're trying to correct bad business behavior. Then you raise the bar the next time around till you get to a satisfactory level. All right. So, again, Microsoft has to hold its gaming division more accountable from the top if they plan to reverse the extremely negative effects from the ABK deal falling, failing under Phil Spencer, Xbox has made more money than ever before, but it's not about you just making money. You're in the market. So you got to make more money than you've have previously. And you got to make money in a competitive realm with your competitors. And if you want to be in this triple a gaming market, you want the regulators to help you in this market, then you got to be making triple a market money. You, you, you're not going to reach 3 billion gamers. If you can't even compete in the 300 million gamer sector. Okay. All right. So they have done so that even though they've made more money than they ever have, because the, the, the rules of the game were different back then, they have done so while losing a competitive edge in software accolades and consumers, overall consumers versus their peers. Microsoft needs to have a plan in place to ensure that the gaming division improves for everybody. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about this all in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did enjoy what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the Broadband Bullies, PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture and Cloud Dosage. All right. And again, if you're if this Klaus, if you're trying to get a grasp on why cloud is so important, that's a great place for you to go. With that said, peace. Have a wonderful gaming day.